tasting. Why do we do it? How do you do it? And how do you become awesome at it? Wine tasting is one of those things that will not only improve your ability to assess quality in wine, but it will also teach you a lot about yourself. You'll know what you like about a wine and why. Despite what you might have heard, you don't have to have a super palate to be a great taster. I probably have an average, given this guy, average plus tasting ability, but it's really this system of focus and structured observation that I use that has made me such a great taster. In fact, I created a wine journal that specifically follows the method that I use so you can practice. If you fill out one of these journals, you're gonna be a lot better than when you started. Little story behind this journal before we dive into this tasting method that I'm gonna show you. Uh, I took this journal with me to test it out at a Chilean wine intensive in New Orleans, and it was crazy. At the end of the tasting, we probably went through about 150 wines. They had a blind tasting, new wines. We hadn't tasted them yet before. We had to identify where they were from, what grape variety, and the vintage. But because I had taken such great notes in this journal, we started blind tasting and I was like, oh, this was easy. It was like riding a bicycle. And sure enough, at the end, when they started to announce the results with each one, everyone's points went up and I started maybe around 10th place. Uh, then I bumped up to seventh, then I was at fourth, and I was tied for first. And then at the end, they, they called the last vintage and I ended up winning. So it just goes to show that practice does indeed improve your ability. But let me shut up about that now and let's get right to it with this bottle of wine. I have with me here a bottle of Garnacha Tintorera. This is a Spanish wine, AKA Alicante Bouchette. If you're feeling a little overwhelmed with the grape varieties and you don't know where to get started, I highly recommend picking up a copy of the Wine Folly book. On the Alicante Bouchette page, you can see some initial tasting notes to get you started. When you get started, throw in the date. This was tasted today, it's 2016 vintage and it'll taste different tomorrow. Uh, producer, if you're a little confused looking on the label for the producer's name, quick tip is to flip it around the back and see who bottled it. Uh, it looks like Los Sara Vinos is, De Finca is who did it, so Altos de Los Sara is probably the best name to write on there. Next is the varieties. This is a Garnacha Tintorera. You could put Garnacha Tintorera. Then we have the name of the wine, La Senda del Diablo. Um, and then we want to know the regional information. It's not here on the label, so let's flip it around the back and see what information we can get. This is the official classification. It's a, basically a uh, IGP of Spain, so I'll just put Castilla y Leon in here. Now let's take a look at the wine. In the back of your journal, you will find an awesome little pocket with a little wine tasting hue card in it. Um, so hold the wine over the cue card and take a look at the hue. Make an assessment based on the hue. It doesn't have to match perfectly, but I can see here looking across the reds, this is a purple and I can't see through it, so it is a deep purple color. Deep purple. Awesome. Next thing, uh, I look for fruit flavors, herb flavors, other flavors, oak flavors, earth flavors, anything that can help me define this wine a little bit better. Right off the bat, I do get some really strong notes of rich, stewed plums. It does have a bit of a note of blackberry as well. This is definitely a black fruit driven wine. There is something sort of sour and creamier about the wine that I do smell. This is another flavor, berry yogurt. I do get a subtle whiff of black pepper and sage. And in terms of earthiness, there's this sort of rocky minerality that I might describe as schist rocks. Okay, let's move on to the tasting portion of this wine. Uh, in this section, you really want to take a big sip and swish it all around. Really get it all over your palate. Body-wise, this is a big wine. I would say it's probably a medium plus to full-bodied wine. Um, there is a little bit of acidity in this wine that makes it taste a little bit lighter bodied to me. Oh, what the hell, let's go bold. This is a big guy. Tannin-wise, 
That's that texture on your palate you feel when you rub your tongue to the roof of your mouth. So take a moment to sort of feel that texture out. I do get bitterness on this wine. I taste bitterness in the back of the palate, but tannin wise, it doesn't have a whole lot of tannin. So I would almost put this in medium minus. Acidity wise, when we tasted it earlier, I could almost gleek. It had felt like it had so much acidity. It's gonna be less acidity than most white wines. I'm gonna put it on medium. Uh, Cause in my skill set, that's about where I think it is. Alcohol level, it says it's 14.5 on the back, so let's just throw it in, medium plus alcohol level. And then to me, when I taste this wine, it is dry, it is not sweet. All right, now that we've done sort of an analysis of the structure of this wine, and we've written that into our tasting notes, let's see about the flavors we get, and so we can fill in that side of the tasting journal. All right, thinking about flavors, I do get a sourness right up front, it's sort of like sour blackberry that leads into sort of more a sweet berry. And then on the finish, I get a strong note of bitterness that it's not unpleasant, but it's more like the bitterness of kale. And uh, then on the finish, I do feel that texture of alcohol. I don't feel a whole lot of oak. So I'm gonna say it's a sweet alcohol finish. Okay, last remarks you might say, these are sort of your opinions, you're starting to develop opinions about this wine. I would say it tastes pretty well balanced to me, but I don't think it's gonna age. Maybe two to three years more. Overall, I thought this wine was pretty good. I would say it was decent. Um, I'm not blown away by it, so I'm gonna give it my basic rating, medium face. There we go. So we filled out the tasting journal. I've tasted this wine pretty critically, uh, and not negatively, but critically. And uh, I have a clear assessment of a Garnacha Tintorera from Castilla y Leon. I have a profile in my head on how it tastes, and I can reference these notes in the future. That was a lot of fun. So if you like what we're doing at Wine Folly, definitely subscribe. That's winefolly.com slash subscribe. Not only will you get uh, access to our newsletter, which has lots of great articles and tips, um, but you get the Wine 101 guide. And if you would like to get uh, this journal, have one of your own, definitely check the link right below this video. Alright guys, I love you so much. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Peace out.